Hi, my name's Leo and I'm a boat builder and a sailor. A few years ago I bought a very old and quite famous wooden sailing yacht for the price of one dollar and since then I've been rebuilding that boat from the keel up with the help of a lot of amazing people. Now today's video is about a very special part of uh, any classic wooden boat uh, rebuild or new build and that of course is the front door. We're also going to begin caulking the deck and we're going to get the main companionway hatch and the cockpit combing installed on the boat. So there's a lot going on. We're about to caulk the deck. That means that we're gonna do our best to make the deck watertight. The deck seams are taking three strands of cotton. It seems like that's what they want for the, the seam size. Now we already did a whole episode on corking the hull and so there's a lot of information in there about uh, the tools and the process and how it all works. So if you're interested in uh, a deeper dive into corking, go back and watch episode 96. Basically corking the deck is very similar to corking the hull. Uh, it's a process of packing cotton into the seams or oakum in some cases, as well as sealing the deck. Uh, the cotton actually adds a lot of strength to it uh, because it makes the whole thing rigid. On top of the cotton, we're gonna be painting the seams with TDS, and that's a sticky black rubber compound, which is gonna be the first barrier uh, to keep the deck watertight. Any water that does get through that uh, will get to the cotton, and the cotton, when it gets wet, swells up, uh, which adds a further layer of protection. The deck being in yellow cedar, it's pretty soft material, so we have to be pretty careful about how hard we caulk it. Granted, we do need to develop enough tension in the deck to be able to keep it watertight. So building that tension creates this big rigid structure that won't have any movement or flex in it. And the, the deck is pretty heavily built as it is, and it has all that diagonal strapping, which helps increase the rigidity, but the deck caulking is important in basically taking all these individual strakes and all these pieces that the deck structure is made out of and making them act more as one uh, congruous unit. So it's time to talk about Tally Ho's front door. So in sailing yachts, uh, the front door seems to have gone out of fashion recently, which is a shame, I think. Uh, traditionally, it would be mounted in the top sides of a yacht uh, and would allow easy access for uh, owners and guests, as well as a nice spot to swim from or fish from uh, when at anchor or even to load on stores when at the dock. You can clearly see from this photograph of Tally Ho sailing in 1927 that the front door was mounted on the starboard side because obviously we can't see it uh, on the port side, which is visible. Visible. But we can imagine that it was probably a beautiful solid oak frame and panel door, something quite heavy duty, and that's exactly what we're going to make to fit on the starboard side uh, of the new top sides. Now building the front door for a yacht is a really uh, big honour for any shipwright and uh, installing that front door in the boat is a, a really major milestone and we're all really excited about it. Nick, we've talked a lot about the boat's front door and I'm um, really happy that you're uh, up, for the, up for the job. Uh, I think. Maybe you're the right man for it. How do you feel about doing this? Honestly, when you asked me, I, I thought you were joking. I, I, I mean, it's like the thing that makes you want to be a boat builder is the front door. And yeah, I'm, I'm stoked. I'm scared. I just can't believe it. So this is a template for the front door. Depending on the size of the boat, it might be in, you know, traditionally in different places, but uh, on a boat like this, probably have it quite far forward so that there's room to have it above the waterline. In this kind of area, it would probably look good. What side of the door do you put your mailbox in England? 
Well, the mailbox will probably just be right in, in the door itself. Got it. I like that. I like it up forward more. Yeah? Okay. Yeah, plenty of room for a couple of potted plants on either side of it, too. Now you're just being silly, buddy. <laughs> That's it, I reckon. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Let's see what the experts think here. It definitely looks like it's English style. Yeah. I mean, West Coast style, you, you put it a little bit further forward, but you know, it's good to keep to the original aesthetics of the boat. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Leo made the good point. I was asking about which side the hinges go on, but since water's flowing this way, you've got to make the knob on the app's face so that the door opens and doesn't disturb the hydrodynamic qualities while underway. How did you do that? Because it's a piece of sh So this door is gonna be built with traditional joinery, uh, which means a mortise and tenon and a panel that's captured in the frame that has a tongue and a groove uh, where one insets into the other. Um, now a mortise and tenon is basically um, a hole cut into one piece and then a sticky outy bit cut into the other piece, and the sticky outy bit goes into the hole. <laughs> <laughs> it's so hard to describe. What do you call that? Wait, what do you call a tenon bit? without saying the word tenon? <laughs> what do you a call a tenon? Yeah. It's like a it's like a finger in a hole. <laughs> There's lots of ways to cut a mortise. Um, you could use just a chisel and cut it out that way. You can use a hand drill, uh, and you have probably seen um, a uh, like a mortise press, um, which is used kind of like a drill press with a, a chisel in it uh, that has sharp uh, corners. Uh, what I did instead was use the domino uh, machine, which basically hogs out a bunch of waste for a floating tenon. So I just used that to get most of the waste out of the way, and then I came back with a chisel to straighten everything up. Getting ready, getting geared up to put something on the boat. Uh, real exciting, because it's really shiny. All right, let's see it. So today, as you can probably see, we're moving the companionway hatch onto the boat, which is pretty exciting. It's been getting extra coats of varnish in the lower part of the shop there, but now it's ready to get on the boat and we need it in there to get the combing in and keep on moving forward. So uh, today's the day, it's going up. You know, it's really heartening seeing these young guys cut their teeth on their first traditional wooden front door. Uh, 
Man, it, it sure takes me back. My first wooden front door in a yacht was in a traditional 30s Bayliner uh, that had been sitting in the port defunct for several decades. Um, and the wooden front door is pretty much what saved her. We already love the noise, Seal. I think Joe left because of this noise. <laughs> he said he won't come back until I'm done. I think he left the country. <laughs> he might have left this mortal plane. <laughs> How's that going, Nick? So far, so good. It's a pretty tight fit. Hey, uh... You used the wrong type of wood there, what's going on? <laughs> so we're making patterns. Um, so this is kind of a test piece to see if the process that we're using is gonna work out. Uh, essentially, I'm making a pattern uh, for the door for each individual slot, uh, which I'll then transfer onto the final pieces of wood. Um, and the reason we're doing that is that typically on a raised panel or a floating panel, these pieces kind of just float inside and they have some space either way but we wanna make this door particularly thick and strong. So we want this to be super tight. Uh, it's not gonna have much room to expand and contract. So in order to counteract that, we're using white oak, which is cut in a particular way, uh, which we call quarter sawn. And quarter sawn oak uh, expands and contracts and moves a lot less than typical just flat sawn oak. How do you fit in there, Clifton? I don't. You can't see what's going on below deck, but I've got myself wedged with no support. Completely naked. From the build string. <laughs> um, just so I can get this one foot piece of tape. Ugh. And it's better to just fight it and get the tape on there because the alternative is getting in here and cleaning up all of the TDS once it squeezes out. Yeah, no thanks. So the main companionway hatch is about to get installed for good on the boat and that's really exciting. It's the first piece of deck furniture and it sort of feels like uh, entering a new phase of the work on the deck of the boat, getting closer to completion because uh, it opens up a lot of other work and other things that can be installed such as the cockpit combing which can go in once this is in. So uh, it's a beautiful piece, it's really exciting to see it going down on deck and um, the guys are bedding it down with Sikaflex, so it's a pretty permanent install, uh, unlike... Are you using TDS? As per owner. Uh-huh, yeah, yeah. All right. I forget what I say, you know? So the guys are bedding it down with TDS. How's it over here? Looks good, dude. Now mash down on it, Patty. With me. You want to go down? Mash down. Now with your rivets. I don't have rivets. Yeah, and you want those back you're doing that. Oh, I just pinched my little finger. That happens. <laughs> So, guys, what's going on here? Well, Patty's learning how to cork. And it turns out that it's really freaking hard. It's hard. It's hard. Yeah. You just have to thread a nice consistent uh, weave in here. Looking good? Yeah. See that divot there? That's where Leo said it's looking good. <laughs> It's, it might be a little bit more comfortable if there weren't two like <laughs> legendary shipwrights watching my <laughs> every motion, but, but 
Yeah, no, it, it looks cool. I don't know. I think it's... Does it feel natural? Does it feel easy? Does it feel difficult? It's like, it's just super hard to learn how to hold everything. You know, like this is not a normal hammer. It's like I've held a hammer before. Cool. cool. Good stuff, guys. That was fun. Thanks, Seal. You're doing great, Patrick. You're doing great, buddy. I'm <laughs> doing a good job. <laughs> We're all very proud of you. I mean, if it were me, I'd probably go with what was cheaper because I'm always on a budget. <laughs> you like an extra port that if yeah. you wanted to, at some point, in this just gives you an extra place to sure. fuel from. <laughs> Hi, Clifton. Hiya. What's going on here? Here we are. We're about to get a little sticky. Got some uh, TDS to bed the cockpit combing down. Uh, got a tape job to protect our varnish and our raw wood sill. Um, we're right at the zero moment. Um, I got my hair did for this. <laughs> All right, ready? let's do it. With a little coxing. Ooh. Yep. Quick clamp just so I can take my time to getting the bolts snugged up. Goobery mess. I'll make it pretty. Yeah, I like that. Y'all like that? So, like we were talking about before, uh, how we want these panels to be so perfectly fit, the way that we're doing that is we're making a pattern uh, off the openings of each of the little panels, and then I'm using that pattern um, here in my router, and I'm using the pattern as a guide so I can route out the shape that we need for the reveal. So Nick, the door is assembled, it looks amazing. Yeah, it's it's not totally fitted yet, obviously. There's still some gaps and stuff that we have to tighten up, some fitting. We'll put nice little chamfers on all this, get some of the blood off. Um, <laughs> but it's actually been, uh, we were kind of cutting it to the line to get this video out on Saturday. Uh, and Patty actually stepped in and helped out with a bunch um, of fitting the panels and stuff. But I do think that it's it's in a state where we can at least get it up on the boat and really get this marked out so we can see what the opening is going to look like. It's a big moment, fellas. The door is currently uh, flat and there is some shape to the hull. So uh, why don't you explain how we're actually going to, well, to fit the door to the shape of the hull? It's not super difficult. We're just going to have to build a larger steam box and we'll pop this in and we'll get it steam bent in no time. We have it shaped the hull like that. That's, that's pretty good right there. I was looking at my I'm pretty happy with this position. I think it looks good. Yeah. Uh, what do you think? Yeah, it's kind of just how I imagined it. Cool. Well, uh, if you're happy to, I'll leave it up to you to describe the final line.
So the front door is looking really great. Nick did a fantastic job on it so far, uh, and uh, Zeal did a great job cutting a very accurate hole in the side of the boat. So I'm really looking forward to uh, seeing the door getting trimmed up and finished and mounted uh, hung pretty soon. In other news, the main companionway hatch and the cockpit combing are looking really fantastic on deck. That is a major milestone for us, and I'm really pleased. And it's great that uh, almost all of the deck is corked as well. Uh, we're just holding off on a few seams uh, which are relevant to the hatches that still have to go in. So a big thanks to the whole team here for all their amazing work. Thanks to you for watching and a massive, massive thank you to everyone who has donated or otherwise supported this project. It does make a huge difference. It means we're able to keep on doing this work and I'm able to keep on making and editing these videos. So I really, really appreciate it. And I'll see you next time. Cheers. I just can't believe it. Great. Right. Um... <laughs> <laughs> is of course fitting the front door. <laughs> <laughs>